In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our celebration of the Eucharist, the Holy Communion, on this beautiful bank holiday Sunday morning, the fourth Sunday of Easter. We do have Sunday school today, I think. Yes, we do. So, yes, come on. <laughs> we'll let, let's light the Sunday school candle. Aha. Are you going to hold it? Oh, you've got your own? You have your own? Well, indeed, we'll use the Sunday school matches, yes. <laughs> You're on the case. Oh, come on, yes, come on. Oh, brilliant. Ooh, ooh. Yes, it worked. It worked. <laughs> it worked momentarily. Don't you blow. I'll say it to Okay, just wait. That's it. Here we are. Oh, oh, oh. Early. Perfect. Now, let's just hang on a second. <laughs> Let us pray. Jesus, our light, shine in our hearts and fill us with your love. Amen. Amen. Now, today, I know our gospel is going to be about Jesus, the Good Shepherd, and our, we're going to be singing the 23rd Psalm. So, I think you're doing something about sheep. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> something about sheep. We'll hear all about it later, and you're welcome to go along, too, if you wish. Yeah. So have a good time, and we'll see you later. <laughs> well done. <laughs> Let's stand and sing our first hymn. It's number 203, 203. Good Christians all rejoice and sing. Christ died to sin once for all, and now he lives to God. Let us renew our resolve to have done with all that is evil, and confess our sins in penitence and faith. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life 
Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with the living bread. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the Father of all mercies cleanse you from your sins and restore you in his image to the praise and glory of his name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Risen Christ, faithful shepherd of your Father's sheep, teach us to hear your voice and to follow your command, that all your people may be gathered into one flock to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Please be seated for the first reading. reading from the book of Acts, chapter 2, beginning at verse 42. Many were baptized and were added to the community. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. Awe came upon everyone because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Jesus said to the Pharisees, Very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate but climbs in by another way is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief only comes to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. This is the gospel of the Lord. May what I speak, may what you hear be in the name of the God of love, who creates, redeems, and sustains every single one of us. Amen. Please be seated. <clears throat> A verse for you from that gospel reading. John chapter 10, verse 4. Jesus said, The shepherd goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. Jesus as a shepherd, yeah. Jesus as the good, the beautiful shepherd. It's one of our favorite images for him, isn't it? Who couldn't but be moved by those wonderful words of the 23rd Psalm, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Indeed, we'll, we'll sing it later. Or indeed, in today's gospel, we heard a variation on this theme when Jesus described himself as the gate, the gate for the sheep. Did you notice that? In other words, Jesus said, I am like the shepherd who places his own body on the line, literally. Jesus said, I'm like the shepherd who at night lies across the entrance to the sheepfold, turning his own body into a gate, into a protective barrier, guarding the sheep inside. Beautiful. In fact, it seems to me that there's really only one downside to all this talk of Jesus as a shepherd, and it's this. If Jesus is the shepherd, then what does that make us? Yeah. If Jesus is the shepherd, then you and I, surely, my woolly friends, <laughs> we're the sheep. Yes, we are the sheep. And let's be honest, sheep haven't always had the best reputation in the world, yes? <laughs> For a start, sheep are sometimes pretty dirty, smelly animals. You know, my granddad back home in Ireland, my maternal grandfather, was a sort of a part-time farmer, and he had some sheep. And I was never particularly fond of these sheep as a child. Little lambs, on the other hand, little lambs I could get into, they're cute and nice. <laughs> 
But sheep are sometimes maggoty and often dirty and very likely, as I discovered as a child, likely to kick you. <laughs> What's more, sheep are pretty stupid animals, aren't they? We say, after all, that people are behaving like sheep when they follow blindly yeah, and without thinking for themselves. And what's more, to say that someone is sheepish is not usually a compliment, is it? No, all in all, to be compared with sheep is no great thing. Sheep are slow-witted, easily led astray, dumb animals. Or at least that's what I used to think. That's what I used to think until a few years ago I read a book by the American author and preacher Barbara Brown Taylor. Now, I'm sure I've mentioned Barbara Brown Taylor before. She's one of my favorite preachers. Anyway, she says in this book, she says that sheep aren't stupid at all. She says that this idea that sheep are stupid is a lie, an ugly rumor spread by cattle farmers. <laughs> Because, you see, cows and sheep are very different. Cows are herded from the back, from the rear, by farmers brandishing sticks or cowboys cracking whips. But that approach won't work with sheep. If you stand behind sheep making loud noises, waving a stick in the air, all they'll do is run round behind you because sheep prefer to be led. Yeah, You push cows, she says, but you lead sheep. Because sheep won't go anywhere that someone else has not gone ahead of them first. <laughs> Which, far from being stupid, sounds very sensible and smart to me. Sheep are no fools. Let someone else go in there first. What's more, according to Barbara Brown Taylor, sheep really do know the voice of their own shepherd, as was mentioned in the gospel. Apparently, even today in the Middle East, there are still shepherds who take their flocks up on the hills every day to graze, and they bring the sheep home every night for safety. And during the day out on the hills, several different flocks of sheep will get all mixed up together. But the shepherds don't worry about the flocks getting all mixed up. They don't brand them or separate them. Because when it comes evening and time to go home, all the shepherd has to do is call. Each shepherd has his own special call or whistle or a special pipe. Apparently, they play a tune on. And the sheep recognize this call and know which shepherd is their shepherd. And all of that, it seems to me, makes sheep sound remarkably smart, really, maybe even in some respects smarter than us humans. Sheep know their shepherd. They don't go following other shepherds willy-nilly out of confusion or laziness or fear. No, sheep know their own shepherd, and they get attached to their own shepherd. Why? Because it's a relationship where they know they'll be cared for. As Jesus says in today's gospel, follow the good shepherd and you will come in and go out in safety. You will find good pasture. So maybe then we shouldn't be too upset about being compared with sheep. Turns out that far from being dim, they're quite clever and they know instinctively who to follow who to trust. And so the question, the inevitable question today, it seems to me, is this. What about us? Do we know who to follow? Do we know who to trust? After all, it can be confusing to know who to listen to, what voices to follow, yeah? As Jesus says in this morning's gospel, there are lots of other voices out there trying to convince the sheep to follow them. Thieves, he calls them. Bandits, he calls them. 
thieves who imitate the voice of the good shepherd, who try to fool the sheep into following them. And all of that got me thinking, who or what are the bandits and the thieves in our world today? Who or what are the voices trying to fool us into following them, trying to lure us into their deadly trap? Hmm, good question, eh? Well, there are many such voices, aren't there? So let me try to list some of them for you and see if they sound familiar. Here's one voice, one thief, who is out there trying to steal us away from our true selves. This thief is the voice that says, your value, your worth as a person, depends on externals, depends on how you look on the outside. So if you don't fit our twisted definition of beautiful, and most of all if you don't look young, then you're a failure. So you'd better live your life in a constant state of anxiety. And you'd better give us your money so we can sell you our latest snake oil, our latest elixir of eternal youth. We know, don't we, deep down, that all of that is nonsense. We are not our packaging. We are not our packaging. But how often do we fall into the trap of listening to and following that thief of our dignity? Or well, here's another one for you. This thief is the voice that says, your value, your worth, depends on your popularity. Depends on, for example, the number of social media likes you have, <laughs> or retweets, God help us. This one is particularly insidious, I think, because it plays on our need to be liked, our need to be loved. And there's nothing wrong with that in itself. The problem comes, however, when our need to be liked and popular leads us, for instance, to put that desire ahead of the need to speak the truth, the inconvenient, sometimes, truth. Again, we know we shouldn't do this, but how often do we find ourselves lured into following the voice of that thief, the thief of our integrity? Or here's another one for you. This thief is the voice that says, your value, your worth, depends on your achievements, depends on how much stuff you can accomplish or how much stuff you can accumulate. So you'd better worry yourself sick. You'd better work every hour God sends, and you'd better live your life in constant fear of failure. Again, we know it's nonsense, but how often do we fall into the trap of listening to, following that thief, the thief of our peace? And finally, just in case I've given the impression that all the thieves are out there in the big bad world, let me say that they can be in here, in our heads too. Some of the most pernicious voices can be those nagging internal voices which beat us up by whispering in our ear, you're not worthy, you're not lovable, you're unforgivable, you're too full of doubt. You don't really belong. Please, please don't listen to those voices because here is the truth. Some days, some days, we are as firm in our faith as the apostles. And some days we're like lost sheep. <laughs> but you know what? We belong to the flock, not because we are certain of God, but because God is certain of us. And so, my woolly friends, take heart. Take heart and above all, remember that you belong 
as part of the flock, you have an inalienable dignity and worth as a member of the flock, as a child of God. If you don't remember anything else I ever say, please remember that. Because whether you are here this morning because you believe or because you want to believe, you belong. You belong to the flock just like the rest of us. And because we are God's sheep, we hear his voice, and he knows us, and we follow him as best we can, and he lays down his life for us. He lies across the opening of the sheepfold for us. He puts his body on the line for us. And because of that, we can trust that nobody, no thief, no bandit, nobody, no one shall ultimately ever be able to steal us out of his hand. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's stand and affirm our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, 
Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we pray for the church throughout the world and for all the different denominations with diverse styles of leadership. Help us all to understand each other better so that divisions may be healed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray that you continue to guide all the leaders of your church across the world and help them to bring us nearer to you. We pray especially and give thanks to you for our Bishop Andrew. We pray also for Christ Church here in Isha and for St. George's West End and for David and Jonathan, and for our rector, Darren, who continues to guide and inspire us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, we look ahead to the joyous, joyous occasion of the forthcoming coronation and offer our prayers for the continued reign of King Charles III. May the wisdom of God, the love of Christ, and the power of the Holy Spirit guide him to govern over the years ahead with righteousness, that all may live in peace and harmony. We pray for your blessing on the King, the Queen, and the Royal Family as they share in the privilege and responsibilities of service. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the people of this world who are in need this day. We turn our thoughts in particular to those in Ukraine who continue to suffer greatly as a result of Russia's military offensive. We give thanks to those rescued by the armed forces from Sudan, but we pray for the many who remain stranded amidst the continued and unremitting violence that pervades the country. And we remember also those affected by the many other conflicts and crisis situations around the world, including in Afghanistan, Syria, and Yemen. Lord God, we ask for you to be with all who are suffering, especially the children and the elderly, and to be with those who are anxious and fearful, to be with those who are injured or have lost their lives, and to be with all who have lost loved ones. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give special thanks for our families and friends. We ask that you bless all the families in your care. Make your loving presence felt amongst them, especially those for whom family life is difficult and testing, and be with those who have no family to care for them and we ask that you pour your blessing on them all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Lord, let us be thankful for the beauty around us. Help us to be positive and to make the most of these simple things. We thank those who contribute so much of their time to the maintenance of both our churches and to the running of them. 
We thank those who provide the flowers, the refreshments, and the beautiful music that we enjoy. We thank you, Lord, for the community in which we live. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of all, we remember those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, especially those on our prayer list today. Yasmin Ingram, Elizabeth Arnold, Betty Walker, Michael Newbold, Malcolm Sayer, Jilly Barrett, Alan Palmer, Catherine S., David Archer, Keith Howell Jones, George Rain, Jill Barnett, Monique Hawkshaw Byrne, Jenny Gerard, Carol Henderson, and Pam Perry. We ask humbly that you give them courage and hope and bring them the joy of your salvation. And Father, we pray quietly also for a moment for those who are close to us personally and need our prayers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember all those who have died recently, including Peter Robinson, Peter Knight, Jane Bush, Andrew Szynski, and Norman Walker. And we remember also those, those whose anniversaries fought at this time. We pray for Mary Bedford, Edna Chambers, Ian Dewar and Alastair Ward. Grant us all who die in faith, according to your promises, a share in your eternal kingdom. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now let us stand for the peace. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then they were glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. next hymn is number 799, 799, The Lord's My Shepherd.
present be present, Lord Jesus Christ, our risen High Priest, make yourself known in the breaking of bread. Amen. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Almighty and Eternal Father. And in these days of Easter, to celebrate with joyful hearts the memory of your wonderful works. For by the mystery of his passion, Jesus Christ, your risen Son, has conquered the powers of death and hell and restored in men and women the image of your glory. He has placed them once more in paradise and opened to them the gate of life eternal. And so in the joy of this Passover, earth and heaven resound with gladness, while angels and archangels and the powers of all creation sing forever the hymn of your glory. <coughs> and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends. And taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take Eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you, gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you, this is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Jesus Christ is Lord. Lord, by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. You are the Savior of the world. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favor on your people, gather us in your loving arms, and bring us with all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, O loving Father, forever and ever. Amen. As our Savior taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. 
Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. We're continuing to administer communion by a simultaneous administration for the moment, which simply means I take each wafer and tinct or dip it briefly into the uh, consecrated wine before placing it in your hands. The Administration will be from the platform at the top of the nave aisle and invite the choir to receive communion first and then uh, the rest of the congregation, beginning with those seated in the middle part of the church, coming down the center aisle and returning, please, to your seats by the side aisle.
Let us pray. Merciful Father, you gave your Son, Jesus Christ, to be the Good Shepherd, and in his love for us, to lay down his life and rise again. Keep us always under his protection, and give us grace to follow in his steps, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We say together the prayer after communion. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Just a few notices before our final hymn and blessing as usual. Please do stay if you can after the service for some uh, refreshments which will be served at the back of the church. Also, we're continuing with the retiring collection at the moment, so you'll find baskets by both doors. Sadly, our contactless payment terminal is out of commission at the moment, so it's just the baskets uh, today. Please give as you are able. I see a large sheep down the back. Can you bring up the bring up the sheep? <laughs> bring up the sheep. Wow. Yes. Was that a ba I heard? <laughs> wow, look at this amazing bit of work. Yeah. What have we got? We got tiny sheep. Yes, lots of little tiny sheep. And then we got oh, the poor sheep lost its foot, did it? <laughs> <laughs> or its hoof, I should say, perhaps. Um, so we've got sheep. And then on the sheep we have, oh, people. And oh, what are these about? These are... Who we're inviting into our flock. Who we're inviting into our flocks. So we've got Mia and Marlo and Auntie Megan and Andy Tom. and Tom. and Oh, there's lots of people. <laughs> lots of people in the flock. We've so, got as well. Ooh. Oh, how beautiful. Oh, how lovely. So we have um, sheep stickers where you can be part of the flock. Write your name on the sticker and stick it on the, on the large sheep. So this will be down at the yeah. back during the coffee. How beautiful. Thank you, Sally. That's wonderful. Thank you very much. Well done, everybody. That's beautiful. And there's some, yeah. what are these, fridge magnets as well of sheep? <laughs> yeah, very good. Okay, thank you. <laughs> well done. <laughs> Thank you to our little lambs. <laughs> a couple of things coming up this week. On Tuesday, you'll have seen this flyer, How Can We Live Together? This is here on Tuesday at 7 for 7.30, and we're hosting the Elmbridge Multi-Faith Forum. And, well, I guess it does what it says in the tin. It's a multi-faith forum with speakers from the Jewish tradition, the Hindu tradition, the Islamic tradition, and our very own Jonathan Andrew from the Anglican Christian uh, tradition, going to speak about that question, how can we live together? I think it's the first time we've hosted one of these uh, multi-faith forum events, certainly in recent years. So do please come along if you can. That's on Tuesday, 7 for 7.30. Then on Wednesday, our wonderful Wednesday fellowship meets again on Wednesday. I love how it's described in the pew sheet, something about life and love and putting the world to rights. So if you'd like to, how does it word it? Oh, it doesn't say it this week. Oh, but it usually says putting the world to rights. Yes, so you can come along and discuss all those theological questions on Wednesday at 11. And Will has a brief announcement about Isher Mayfair, I believe, yeah. Yes, Isha May Fair is taking place on Saturday the 20th of May, um, and we're intending to spend, for the, to open the church up in the afternoon, and uh, Stuart has arranged some music, and I'm looking for volunteers to make cakes, scones, shortbread, etc., 
Uh, if you're willing to do that, uh, there is a list which is by the font at the back of the church. Please write down your name and what you're making. And if you're able to help in that, that afternoon, please let me know at the end of the service. Thank you. And one other thing, obviously next Saturday is the uh, King's Coronation. Um, we could potentially open up the church and watch uh, the processions and the service here. If you'd like to do that, please see me afterwards and I'll open up the church so that can be done. Thank you, Will. And just I should also mention our upcoming annual parochial church meeting, APCM, which is on Sunday the 14th, so two weeks, two weeks today. Um, there are lots of vacant positions on the PCC, and there are positions also to be deanery synod reps, and of course we elect our church wardens every year. So if you're interested in any of those roles, there are nomination forms on the table. Always room for some new people on the uh, PCC. That's the APCM in two weeks' time. Let's stand and sing our final hymn. It's number 194. 194. Alleluia, alleluia, hearts to heaven and voices raise. the Father, by whose love Christ was raised from the dead, open to you who believe the gates of everlasting life. Amen. God the Son, who in bursting from the grave has won a glorious victory, give you joy as you share the Easter faith.
Amen. God, the Holy Spirit, who filled the disciples with the life of the risen Lord, empower you and fill you with Christ's peace. Amen. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia. 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 Thank you.